Redford and the Be Different podcast is back, and we are on the campus, and we, we had a little bit of a spill, but we're fine. That's what happens when you are outside. That's what happens when you're outside. Greg Wichard tried to do everything that he could to make sure everything was running smoothly, and it is right now. It is. Be Different podcast is at Nippert Stadium outside of Section 110 with one of the greatest UC basketball players of all time, Yes, he is a Hall of Famer. Yes, he wore number 21. Yes, he played with Kmart. Yes, he played on the team that was ranked number one in the country. And this guy, I'm, I almost didn't have him on because I'm, I'm very jealous uh, of his leaping ability. We are talking about the high flyer, the helicopter, Melvin Levitt. Melvin Levitt, welcome to the Be Different podcast, man. The helicopter. How's it going? How's it going? It's good, uh, although we do need to talk about your leaping ability. That, that was one thing as a basketball player I couldn't touch. I, 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 I never was able to dunk, man. So when I see you jump and I see that 42-inch vertical, uh, when I watch those highlight tapes, I, I, jealousy sets in, and, and it, 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 more than, it, it sets in hard, too. It's not like a little bit. It, it, it is aggressive. <laughs> it is bad. I, I think that may have go that goes along with the whole Xavier tone. Yeah, you know what I mean. But <laughs> no, uh, hey man, I, that's that was something that I knew people um, obviously really enjoyed. You know what I mean. I obviously enjoyed you know jumping around and, and and dunking and stuff like that. But when you talk about watching it, like I'm getting an opportunity to see a lot of those things that I have as I have over the years, I put myself in your shoes, like you just was explaining it you know, as someone else, like, wow, man, it, that, that was cool. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I have that same sentiment at times about some of the things I actually, <laughs> actually watch about, you know, some of the things I did in the past. It's crazy. So how, how are you doing now? I know you're living in Cincinnati, you're coaching, you're, you're teaching. How is everything on your end right it now? It is absolutely wonderful, man. I couldn't be happier with, you know, the transition. You know, we yep. talked a little bit before about things, you know, before we got started here you know, about the transition, you know, from the you know highest level of playing basketball and, you know, starting to walk a different beat, you know, that second part of life, mm -hmm. and, you know, which was really hard, you know, yeah. to put the tennis shoes up and, and watch your peers continue on and do some of the things that you knew you could do and be a part of, but, you know, doesn't work out for everyone that way. Right. And life comes calling a little bit sooner, you know, and it did for me. And, um, Fortunately enough, I wasn't stubborn about that process. Right. Um, I took the opportunities uh, that was afforded to me at the time, and you know, I came back to the University of Cincinnati, and you know, finished out my degree, and you know, from there, man, every door that I could possibly, you know, want to open has opened. Even yeah. the door of you know possibly entertain another chance to play basketball with this TBT basketball tournament. Which so. is crazy, and I know that we're going to get into that. And, and if you've been in Cincinnati and anywhere on social media, you know that Melvin Levitt is the GM, the head man when it comes uh, to TBT. But uh, maybe go back to that transition piece just briefly. And we, we've had, we have a lot of former players on the Be Different podcast, and, and this is something, you know, a big part of why we decided to start this too was to talk about uh, that transition process because – I mean, you think about guys that play at the highest level like yourself. You know, I, I played at Xavier, and I think about the transition from me playing basketball every single day and putting your heart and soul into it. And then, you know, for me, I didn't get the opportunity to play professional. I know that you did um, for a handful of years. You know, I didn't. And then same thing, kind of like you said, you see a lot of your peers continuing to play, and then I made that decision to kind of move, you know, another direction and just kind of speaking to – the challenges of that. And Rashad Phillips from uh, all-time leading scorer at Detroit Mercy, we had him on last week, and we, we talked about, you know, the same thing, just finding your identity kind of away from that, away from the game and, and away from basketball. Um, I know a lot of times for me it, I felt lost. I felt mm. like I didn't have any oh, yeah. control of anything. Oh, and yeah. Because when you're playing basketball, that is your space right. of freedom. You're, you're, that is your right. space you're of comfort. And and you're immediately gravitated to it. When I was four years old, I was gravitated towards shooting a basketball. And I was until almost 24 years old. That's 20 years of focusing on something that immediately exactly. grabs my attention. And so I know for me personally that, that challenge of kind of breaking through to the next thing, I feel like I'm still pushing to get there. And you kind of alluded to the challenge of it. Have, have you experienced kind of some of those same kind of feelings and sentiments that we've had from guys on the show? Big time. Big time. And there's that that chime we had talked about with the bell. The chime is beautiful. Well, of course, you know, that's that, 
that lets you know we're on UC's campus. Yeah, People hear does. that time, we hear that when we're walking to class, you know, when we're late to practice, or it lets us know we're 15 minutes before we got to get to where we got to get to, or it's the top of the hour. So yeah. we appreciate that bell there here. But yes, I um I experienced the, you know the same things. Um, but sometimes people people won't allow you um, to you know make that transition so easy because they feel what they feel about you as far as what you were able to contribute to the game and what they saw. And that was one of the biggest things. You know, I'm trying to do a different thing, but everybody just keeps telling me, "Man, you should be out there playing." Oh my God, I, I watched this, I watched that, and I see this guy and that guy. You can do, you can be better than this person. So, with that, that was a challenge in itself because, again, I've always thought, and I said to myself, um, "I still could do this if I, you know, get the right opportunity." But again, the right opportunities wasn't, you know, opening up. So again, I had to try on a different hat, you know, and again, no matter how hard it was to walk around the city and things like that, um, coming back to the University of Cincinnati at that time. Um, so when you came back in 2002, correct? Yeah, so yep. 2002, that was your last year playing back or 2001 would have been your last year playing basketball. And then yeah. that ended 2002. Pretty and where, where were you at that time? Were you? I was uh, in Kentucky with the Kentucky Pro Cats at okay. the time in the ABA. It was when the ABA first formed and came back. Now it's uh, the Kentucky Enforcers. Uh, and I was playing on the team uh, there, you know, with the Goober guys, Damon Flint being one of them, uh, Gary Lumpkin being another one, uh, which was fun times, man. It was it was cool to bridge that gap. Uh, Lenny Brown was on that team too as well. Uh, so the mix this Xavier and UC that was that was kind of cool. Uh, but I was injured. Um, I went up for a dunk, came down, kind of shattered the ankle a little bit, uh, got the surgery done, um, and that was kind of, you know. That, that message, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of, okay, now we need to start leaning to some other things. And even though um, I returned a little bit from it, and again, the last actual competition was the 2005, you know, D-League uh, showcase, um, I, I still felt, again, it was, it was, it was important for me to kind of, again, turn the other cheek and, and start doing what I needed to do. Life, again, had came calling, and you never want to walk away from the game on an injury, people say you won't play forever. And being a stubborn kid that I was, I always thought that, you know, I can do this as long as I, you know, really apply myself. But again, you can't control injuries. So. Well, and the injury is really, you know, as an athlete, you feel invincible. Like all athletes and guys who are talented, they feel invincible mm -hmm. when you're on the court. You're, you're addicted to it. It's, right. it's probably the best high that you can get is performing in front of a crowd that is you're getting standing ovations when you get right. a dunk or I'm getting standing ovations when I hit a three-point shot yep. you know back in the Cintas and you get that instant gratification that you're doing the right thing you're doing the right thing and when I got out of it it was like man where do I get that gratification where do I get that same feeling right and you know you may or may not find it in the, in the same way um and for me, I had to start looking at different angles of how I could make a difference and an impact. And right. I know for me, I got, for sure, I remember a moment, probably three years when I got done playing um, and just wasn't satisfied, you know, with where I was. And was like, man, I just, I stopped playing this game because of, you know, injuries and, and you know, now I'm not where I want to be. And right. then, you know, now it's like you, you just keep, you keep going, you keep pushing and, you know, we, we always enjoy that kind of talks. Is, and was there a moment for you when you started like, you know what, I've moved on, I can enjoy, you know, my basketball career, I can go to basketball games and not always think about, you know, me wanting to be out there on the court? Because now for me, when I go to games, I don't want to be out there really. I, I don't know. Is, is there, has there been moments for you where you've been able to kind of feel that? I've experienced the jitters and no more than the NCAA tournament that just passed this year, mm -hmm. which we don't really. We can't talk about I it. I mean, we can talk about I mean, we're, we're <laughs> yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're removed. Yeah. It's hurtful um, to both teams, obviously, you know, who had great years to have that happen on the same day, you know, right after each other and all the rest of that stuff. But I felt really compelled to try to do something about what was going on, you know what I mean, during yeah. that UC game more so than ever, you know what I mean? Can I go out here and just stop play by maybe getting arrested as a streaker? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to see that. Well, I wasn't going to take no clothes off or anything like <laughs> yeah. that, but I'm just saying it was that feeling of right. what could I do? You know what I mean? And, again, mm -hmm. as a former player, man, you, you're in that moment. 
I've, I've seen that happen. I've been on the bench, and I've watched leads dwindle. I've been a coach, and I'm still a coach, and I've had leads, watched them dwindle. It's hard to say what you would do when you're in that situation. You know what I mean? Uh, everyone, again, on the outside looking in says, hey, they should have did this. Hey, they should have did that. But, again, when you're in that moment, man, and it's going crazy, mine kind of leaves you a little bit. I'll give you a perfect example. I just got a car, new car, all right, Chevy model. And, you know, everything is ran by a computer now, right? Mm -hmm. So my battery, come to find out, was running low. I get in my car, and I can't get out. Doors are locked. I'm hitting the key fob, trying to open the door. The door will not lock, unlock. I'm hitting the inside of the, you know, the knob module to try to get it to open, only unlock, but wouldn't open. Immediate panic sets in, okay? It's about, what, 85 degrees. It had just got done raining, so it was kind of humid. I'm in a car with all the windows up. Sunroof closed, okay? I'm a 43-year-old man. And I panicked, okay? <laughs> now, when you hear these stories about being in a locked car, first thing you go to your mind when you're not in the situation, break the window, right? I had a phone in my hand. Never thought, push the button for 911. Never. I hit the horn, obviously the battery's going down, so you're hearing a hmm, hmm, instead of a hur, hur. You know what I mean? So my neighbors are not gonna hear me. So again, <laughs> You, you say what you would do in these moments, man. I, I panicked. I started to sweat profusely. I'm thinking like, <laughs> oh, my God, I, I'm not going to get out of this car. But yet I'm sitting here with a phone in my hand to call for whoever I need to come get me. Or forget the fact that this is a brand new car, dude. Break this window. Because my thought was, it was like, break the window. Nah, man, break your mama's window. I'm not breaking this window. It's a brand new car. But, again, it was one of those situations, man, yeah. as you, you think about what are you going to do. So, for all those situations, man, that people are a part of, like I said, you, you, you sit back and you watch that game, and, and it was rough for on both, both ends, man. And, again, I, I've, I've been in that position before. I, I'm still in that position. I still have the knack and the itch to go out and play. But the new life is taking on its, its yeah. a, a big-time speed, man. The Winwoods City School family has blessed me with four great opportunities. And I say four because I'm teaching and I'm coaching three sports. You know what I mean? So to be in a place that value you like that and to willing to extend, you know, offers for you to be a part of something and be around their kids and coach, mentor, teach, I, I couldn't ask for anything more, man, than that. So, again, the next part of my life has already been, been written. That's great. It's going to continue to be written, you know what I mean? And hopefully the next several chapters going forward is going to be great. That's awesome. And you can be – obviously you're a motivating factor now for – the kids that you're able to teach and touch and, and talk to every single day, but you also can be that guy for former teammates that are finishing up playing or former guys from UC or, or, or anybody, you know, going through the process of, you know, being done playing basketball at 28 or 25 or 24 or 30 or whatever it is. I mean, you're obviously a great resource, you know, for that as well. So that's great stuff. But I'm going to take you back a little bit. Okay. Now we're, we're going we're gonna to go back a little bit. Let's do it. To some of the UC days right here. And okay. We're going to call this Memory Lane with Melvin. Nice. All right. And they say pictures. They tell a thousand words. Oh, Videos yeah. do, too. So we, we got six pictures for you to look at. And all I want you to do is just give a brief exclamation, of, you know, maybe that moment in time. You can take it whatever direction you want. You okay. can tell us about that specific moment um, or maybe just if it's a person. Um, just tell us a little bit about them. If a story comes to mind, feel free to open it up. So okay. there's going to be six different ones here. Cool. And for those listening on audio, I'll do my best to explain to you what these pictures are. So we're going to start with number one. And, Melvin, that is going to be a picture that is you jumping over a golf cart in a gold chain. And, I mean, <laughs> and you look like you are skying. You got the right hand all the way back. It looks like it's heading all the way back over to the baseline. Gold chain is going up in your face. I mean, you look like you could jump on a 20-foot rim in that picture. You know, this pick right here, man, this was the start of something of a year that we wouldn't forget. I wouldn't forget personally. You know, this was going into my last year. Um, and Midnight Madness, I think that was the last event of Midnight Madness. 
Uh, and I wanted to do something that night to leave a lasting impression. And um, the golf cart was in- introduced. I wanted the actual convertible. Who brought the golf cart? Well, Mike Harris. Mike okay. Harris, a former uh, University of Cincinnati Bearcat, was working here at the facilities at the time. Um, and I told those guys I wanted a convertible. Let's get a car in here somehow, okay. some way. But the floor had just been done here at the shoe. and They were making excuses. And bingo. And then Bob Huggins kind of, you know, he said, you know, Mel, I um, don't know if that's a good idea. But, you know, I said, let's go with the next best thing. And Mike Harris ran real quick and said, hey, how about this golf cart right here? This is not perfect, Mike. Let's set it up and we'll run it a certain way and let's do it. But that was uh, jumping into – a new season, man, 98-99, uh, like I said, ended up being really special for us. Uh, we knocked off Duke, the number one team that year. I was in uh, not, I wouldn't say the best shape of my life because I feel really great right now, man. I, I really do. Uh, but I was ready to jump that night. Yeah, um, I, yeah I think you as were. You can, as you yeah, can see, can... the look on my face, man. Yeah, is... it, look, it looks, it looks, <sighs> the look on your face is like, Nothing can stop you, right? It's <laughs> confident. It's 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 mean. It has a swagger to it. Like when I when I look at that picture, I just see just just someone ready to take on the world. And obviously, you guys had a fantastic year that year. And, and that dunk right there that you did, that, I think that set the tone for that year. You know what? That's a that's that's a good good way to describe that, man. It was like like you just said. You know, we're ready to take on yeah. anything and all comers. And that that kind of like you said displays it. Put it all the way back behind my head and just kind of roar through the air and just throw it through as hard as we can here you go all right we're gonna go to the second uh, picture here that's gonna be the trapping of Houston, of a houston player that's uh, you alongside teammate darnell brown and, and this one i almost didn't put up and once again it goes back to my memories of of how difficult and how tough that cincinnati press is i mean i was rashad phillips i bring his name up again we said out of any game, when did he realize that college basketball was for real? He said when he played. He mentioned you, and he didn't know you were coming on this week, specifically said when I played Cincinnati and I played against Kmart and I played against the helicopter and those guys were trapping me on the court, mm-hmm. he's like, I had to go back in the gym for a couple of weeks and be like, am I, <laughs> am I good enough to play at this level? You talk about it. I try to tell people how good – your guys' presses. Why is your press so good? I mean, you look at this Houston defender and look how scared he is. Yeah, he I has, mean, he is. He, he, he's uh, frightened, and I've been there, and it's and it's awful. He's got the what Hugs used to call it. Uh, he used to do this to Keith Gregor a lot because Keith Gregor used to always <laughs> get caught on the sideline. <laughs> Hugs would cock his leg up in the air like he's falling out of bounds and just yell out, "I'm scared." <laughs> That guy's got the scare look on his face. He's got the I'm scared on his face. Um, what made him? <laughs> he does. I mean, that dude literally looks like he's shitting his pants. Hey, right man, now. I'm going to tell you like what, they, man. You guys probably had to clean up the floor after that. That was hey. immediate timeout. Get him out of there. They might have had to leave the – that was t- that's tough. To, it's tough. That was one of the games. That was actually uh, – I had 25 points that game uh, as a sophomore. And Jeez. That was one of the main reasons, you know, the pressing trap at half oh, court. Man. We knocked the ball away, got the ball up to somebody. They would toss it back, and we were on a fast break. But what made our traps, man, so good is that it was it, it was such veracity involved. You know what I mean? Whether if it was a chase down from you missing your angle on the trap or getting beat off the dribble, the chase down was was real. Uh, um, or if you got yourself in a situation where you got caught with that ball and you got caught in the trap, that trap was was mean because we were strong. You know, everybody on that team was benching over 300 some pounds. Mickey Marotti, our strength coach, was just unbelievable. Who's up at Ohio State right now uh, with football? Uh, had us so lean and mean and so strong, man, that we were fearless. We were fearless out there. I mean, and again, when it came to our traps, again, we put the pressure on it. We made yeah. sure that the angles were good. Hugs was really good at teaching your trapping angle, and once you get to the trap try to lock your leg or maybe get your foot in a certain position where they can't split you. Um, but, again, I think it was the intensity. And that's what, that was the draw for me, man. I watched man. Nicky Van Exel and uh, Anthony Buford, those guys, man, uh, Corey Blunt, A.D. Jackson, Terrence Gibson, just to name a few. Those guys that, were, that made that run. You know, watching those guys, man, um, it was unbelievable watching them press and run. You know, and, again, that's what made the University of Cincinnati. That was our basketball style. We played defense and it turned into offense. Yeah, I mean that is 
that's frightening. And, and I've been there. So that guy from Houston, I, I don't know your name, but <laughs> I still think about the UC trap and I hate it. All right. Next picture, we're going to go down to the left corner, a guy that you know very well, a guy that was your head coach here during your time at UC. And <laughs> I, I didn't pick this picture. I, I, I just, it was just funny to me. And the first thing that stuck out to me in this picture is he hugs is he doesn't look too thrilled right now. It looks like it, it could maybe have been after a loss or honestly, it could have been after a bad question from the right. media as well. But Bingo. then his left hand is up by his eye and he's got this big gold ring and he's got a big gold watch. Right. And I was like, that is that's hugs, man. I, I've, I was able to scrimmage against hugs at Xavier when he was at West Virginia. And man, when he came out the door, we're all getting warmed up and we're like, when's hugs going to come out? Right. And this big guy comes out all wrapped in Jordan. He's got his rings on. Yeah. His, his hair is always like in the perfect <laughs> condition. I, I wanted to ask him what kind of gel he used, but he, he just looked at everyone. Yeah. He's like, what's up, fellas? But Coach Hugs, man, what, it, what was it like playing for him? You know, what, is he, what does he mean to you? Wow. Uh, man, uh, I remember, remember meeting uh, Coach Huggins in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania uh, at an AAU tournament. Um, and from that moment on, you know, it was like a, a different relationship. You know, he didn't approach me, you know, like coaches would approach a student athlete. You know what I mean? He approached you like, hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? Like just yeah. – so that's what changed everything for me from in the beginning. Um, and from that process, continuing on through my, you know, junior year and senior year, I didn't go anywhere else as far as my visits. You know, and you allow five college visits to go anywhere you want. And I started to think about, you know, how these guys took all their visits and how they got smoothed by all these universities. And, God, I bet you they ate great food and stayed in some great hotels. I had all that here. You know, all five visits were here at the University of Cincinnati. You know what I mean? And that was, in a sense, because I knew where I wanted to be. I got recruited by everybody in the country except for Duke, Carolina, and Kentucky. Um, I attended Oak Hill Academy for, you know, a couple months. If I'd have stayed out there, maybe I'd get that letter from Duke or Carolina. And then maybe I don't end up here. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, it all worked itself out. But, again, uh, the relationship between Huggins, man, um, is so rich. You know what I mean? There's so many personal memories and, and stories about, you know, the times spent here together. You know, and, again, and he was a different guy. You know, he brought you in personally. You know what I mean? And, again, he didn't we, – we didn't – beat around the bush Huggins wasn't that type of dude you know he was straightforward he was blunt um and that's where I kind of think I get a lot of just trying to be straightforward with people and be straight up you yep. know maybe sometimes being a little bit too direct is offensive to some people but at the end of the day they have to respect you for that because again they didn't they didn't lead you to somewhere that was false hope you know what I mean and, and he tried to really make sure that he took care of us in that fashion to not lead us into false hope he would always tell us when we were getting ready to lose it's like he knew what was going on you know and that's just a, the intuition of you know a great coach or a good person that knows the individuals that he's dealing with and i i i'd be dang if he will say something and we'd be like oh yeah whatever and then it happens yeah. you know we'll go out the next game and we'll get smacked you know what i mean it's, and it's a reality check but again with him um, I think it's, it's special because, again, of, of the type of individual that he was and the type of individual I was. Um, I was taught by hard-nosed coaches coming up through the high school ranks with Coach Mike Moran, uh, formerly of John Carroll University, and Co Coach Ted Kwasniak, you know, Villanza St. Joseph High School. And even going back to my eighth-grade coach, Mr. Oscar, Oscar Mar Marcus at uh, Lincoln Junior Intermediate. They were all hard-nosed men. They were people that were disciplinarians, and they didn't take too much. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I got down here to play for hugs, it was kind of like a smooth, cool transition because I've had a person that was, you know, through my, through my time coming up, but just not the way he did it. Right. You know, hugs had his different way of getting his point across and letting you know what he really meant. Um, but overall, man, as a, as, a, as a individual that I love, I enjoy playing for. If I had to do it all over again, I'll tattoo the same arm with the Bearcat. And I'll come play for the same place, you know what I'm saying? I'll come do it for the same guy, you know, because, again, what I was able to learn from him personally, I think, again, is what's driving a lot of things today for me. 
uh, personally. So I, I have a real, 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 real deep, deep respect for Hugs. We haven't seen each other in a couple of years. Last time I seen him was two years, three years ago at the NCAA tournament. Um, but again, getting that opportunity just to be a part of this guy's going to be in the Hall of Fame, man, one day. Yeah. Um, and he's the third active, most winning coach. So, I mean, I, I to be a part of a fraternity like that, to have my name slid amongst all those yeah. players in all those years is like, it's kind of cool. And then, like I said, the bond that we have. But this picture here, this is either, oh, my God. I mean, that's. These dudes, these guys didn't go to class again. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I'm, I, um, how about, uh Compliance office. Got to have a meeting. Um, uh, Teddy Valentine. God, I just can't stand Teddy you. Teddy V still coming up. I know, Teddy V. I can't he's stand been around you. For, he's, that, that, he's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. You can't, you his, can't get rid of him. His calls, man, are so so over the top. Man. Oh, yeah. That dude. That's, like, that's I mean, his brand, so man. Crazy, that's his man. deal, but, but he's still around. Hey, exactly. You got to do what sells you. Uh, maybe... Hmm. Don't even talk to me about the NCAA tournament. Number one seed? Yeah. That's what it, Are you kidding me? That's Number what it one looks seed? Like. <laughs> that's a great shot of him, though. Great I, one. I always enjoy uh, talking to former players that played for Hugs. And they, all, they all say something similar. They say it in a different manner, but just they, they enjoyed how strong he was getting to the point. You know, mm-hmm. how much... He held you guys accountable for what you did, but there is also a lot of love there as well. So I, I always enjoy asking that hugs question. All right, next one. Okay. I had to talk about the Crosstown shootout. Of, of course, course the, the Xavier-UC rivalry. But I want to talk about the fight. I want to yeah. talk about that moment as a guy that played in the rivalry. I was in that game. What, what did you take from that? Were, were you surprised when it happened? Uh, did you feel that the media maybe made too much of that moment? I'm just curious, uh, you know, from a well, guy that played at UC late 90s, early 2000, you know, late 90s, right? You know, what were your thoughts at that moment? Well, I got a phone call, and someone said, "Hey, what's going on?" And I go, "What are you talking about?" I said at the game. I'm like, I'm not even at the home. I'm not at home yet. I gotta, you know, I gotta get there. Oh, so you have no idea? Okay, bye. Then I get a text, and it says, why did Yancey hit him like that? <laughs> yeah. I said, what? What is going on here? So I, I rush to get to the house. Wow. As a guy that played in this game, as a guy that played against some guys that sometimes rubbed you the wrong way, it happens for it to be as competitive that it used to be amongst us, it was kind of embarrassing. I wouldn't say kind of embarrassing. It was embarrassing to me. Um, Because, again, I know that we played at a time where it really was serious, Mm -hmm. where the Crosstown shootout, them be fighting words, the Terry Nelsons, Corey Blunt years, all right, Um, the Byron Larkin, Pete Sears, you know, those, I mean, this rivalry has went on for years, man, before us. And getting a part of it, I found out about how serious it was when I was chased down by Pat Kelsey my freshman year. You know, I'm going in for just to finish the layup. It's about maybe 10, 11 seconds left. This dude comes out of nowhere and clobbers me from behind, knocks me into the basket support. I'm like, okay. My guys thought it was hilarious because, again, they know what this game is about. They've been here before. I haven't. But that's how let me that's what let me know the seriousness and the severity of the game. Obviously, the city got his all his hoopla. But no disrespect to any of the guys that's on Bearcat Jam right now that's in this game. But that was truly embarrassing. It was an embarrassing moment for our university. It was a black eye on our university. Because again, these type of events um, are special to our city. Um, and they're special to our university. And to have it marred by, you know, some words being exchanged or just letting the action get out of hand. You know, yeah, we got beat. I mean, we, we came over to the Centos and we got beat by Lenny Brown and them by 19, 20 points, but we didn't go after nobody, even though they, they chirped at us. They, they, they talked trash to us. The fans said some unbelievable things to us, but we didn't let it get to that point because at the end of the day, and so this is what I'm really getting to. 
even though we were across not too far from each other, there was a general mutual respect for each other's abilities. That's why we game together and we had open gyms in the old field house over there on your campus. We had a whole old open gyms on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoons here at the University of Cincinnati. Okay. Because there was a mutual respect amongst us all. You know, we went out in the same places in the city. We saw each other all the time. We played in the Devil Rose Summer League. All right. So again, the respect amongst us, again, was there. And I don't think the respect of these athletes in this game was there. It's a new generation of kid, man. You yeah. know, social media runs everything now. Likes, tweets, this and that. All right. So I think a lot of that moment took over with our new generation of kids and thinking that this is what you do in a situation like this, you know, if it gets out of hand in a rivalry game. This is not how you react in any situation, okay, to let something get out of control of this magnitude. And like I said, in a special event like this, man, was, was very hurtful to me. I didn't understand it. Once I saw the interviews of Two Holloway and uh, some of our guys, I, I, it still didn't make any sense because, again, trash talk happens, man, okay? It happens. No one was physically assaulted in this game except for when this fight started. Yeah. All right, so there was no hard foul that sent somebody into the stands bleeding. So it shouldn't have never got this way. So to me, man, again, black eye on my university, I know it was a sore spot for you guys oh, yeah. as well. I think on both sides and a little bit of a wake-up call, like, hey, this is a big-time rivalry, but you don't need to go there. just certain lines that you don't need to cross. So if nothing else, it happened. You know, fortunately now they've been able to move on and at least play the game. And now we're actually back on campuses playing the game, right. which, is, which is where it should, should be. And that, that, should be. And that's where you really get the true feel of the rivalry is when you're playing at UC, when you're playing at Xavier. That's when this feels like one of the best rivalries in the country, and, and, and I definitely believe that it is. All right, the next two here. I, I want to go to two dunks that I watched over <laughs> and over and over last night. I was looking up these clips of the helicopter of Melvin Levitt just levitating over people. I mean, the, the one photo of you was off of an offensive rebound. You literally jumped over a guy. That dunk was ranked top 50 all-time dunks of all time. Top, top 50. I believe it was ranked number 35. 35. Melvin Levitt. Pop a runway nine or clear for takeoff. Win zero eight zero at five. Advise eight is Fox on the board. Wow, that was a pretty severe rotation there. You might want to check on those passengers in the rear cabin when you return to the ground. Because chances are they're either going to be filing lawsuits or, or severely injured. That dunk. For sure. One of the best dunks of all time. And then the other one, one of your, I think definitely your greatest moments, especially for UC fans, was that game when you guys took down Duke, tied up at the end of the game. Amazing play is called. You get that dunk and you solidify that victory for the Bearcats in the Alaskan shootout. I mean, th those two dunks right there, I mean, Melvin, t t take me through both of those, how both of those happened. You know, there's a backstory to everything, all right, that happens, and that's the cool part about learning about moments. And learning about this moment where I caught that ball off the rim, um, I have been challenged, as all of our guys would know, Bob Huggins knows how to challenge you, and he knows how to push your buttons to get you going. And this is, I think, maybe our fourth or fifth game of the season, maybe, maybe not, but I wasn't ready to start the year. Okay, and he let me know it. He let me know it in great Huggins fashion. Challenged me in the locker room as he does, challenge all of his players. I think Danny Fortson knows about this. Art Lone knows about the way he challenges. Um, a couple others in the past. Ken, too. Ken knows well. Ken knows very well. And he got probably about as close as this mic is to my face, all right, and was just, mm, just let me have it. So therefore, then at that point, knowing that, okay, I've been called out by my coach in front of all my teammates. Yes, he's right about what he's saying. I am not ready to start this year. I didn't do the things that I needed to do. Let's go out here and take care of the moments. 
and let's get yourself ready to go. And that dunk there is the third of three in a row. Okay, there were two dunks before that one that came. That one there announced the arrival of Melvin Levitt and what he was going to do the rest of that season. And the rest of that season, it was just kind of, I just, I took off from there. But the shot, the bounce, I saw it all kind of happening, just watching it and envisioning it all over again. But I didn't think I would get to that ball because the ball ventured off to the other side. And I had to stretch and reach around to grab that. And if you saw the play, Bobby Brandon's there. There's another Alcorn State player's there. Had they not been there, I'd probably continue to keep going with my momentum and just fly right by and fall partially in the baseline area on my face or something. But if you watch it, they stop me. They're, it's like they formed a wall. Their two bodies kind of formed a wall as they were clinching to try to – they thought they were going to go jump and get the rebound. I think they were thinking about jumping as they were clinching, but then they realized, like, wow, this guy's knees is here. Who is this? So they just kind of did this and braced, and they made a wall. So I immediately, when I dunked it, I, my momentum stopped because I hit both of their bodies, and that's where the swing comes from. And then, as you can see, Bobby, he's ducking, yeah. you know, and – after that, I remember finally in the timeout, Bobby goes, shit, Mel, what are you, what's going on, man? Bob, get out of the way, all right? I, you're, you're getting dunked on, too, just like this guy. So, But that was fun. The Duke game, obviously, um, we didn't go up there to see how we matched up with these guys, man. We went up there to beat them. Special trip that year, uh, being in Alaska with each other. It was over Thanksgiving break. And we all know how hard it is to be away from home on Thanksgiving. You don't have moms cooking. You don't have anything remotely near yeah. moms cooking. But this was special because in true Huggins fashion, he and the boosters at the University of Cincinnati did something really great. We're practicing, okay, at an armory. And things are going well, we thought. Hug starts practice over. We're an hour and 45 minutes in. Now, he was known for this type of stuff. Kick us out of practice at UC, bring us back at midnight. We're thinking, are you kidding me, man? We're out here busting it. It's hour 45 minutes in, start it over. So now everybody's pissed, right? Now we're banging each other, all right? We're in there now. We're getting probably one of our best practices. Afterwards, everybody's geared up to go. Everybody's still in a bad mood. We get back to the hotel, and there's a, a, a lady there waiting. And she's ushering us to a certain area. And when we walk in, man, there was a full-blown Thanksgiving spread. Okay? Full-blown. I'm talking everything. I, if I knew the boosters' names right now, I would say every last booster. But I'll just say to the boosters that were there in Alaska with us that took that trip, that had something to do with that Thanksgiving dinner, you have no idea what you did for Melvin Levitt personally or our basketball team. It immediately brought us together and it immediately made us realize again who our coach was. Here it is. We're thinking he's starting practice over because he's pissed. No, he's starting practice over because the people needed more time to get everything done. Teaches you a lesson about yourself a little yeah. bit too. You know what I mean? Just to kind of not think everything is bad or think the worst of every moment. But, again, he did that for us. And I think that moment, as we sat down to begin to eat, not much was said because, of course, we were a little bit winded. But I think we were locked in visually as we were eating turkey, dressing, on what we were getting ready to do the next day. Oh, Duke was in trouble. All right? And that trip was a bonding. It was, a, was one of the most bonding moments I've ever had in my life on any team, man. So the dunk, to end it that way, Again, I, I'm a dunker. I didn't envision shooting a jump shot. I didn't envision pulling up. You know what I mean? It was that play. Dunk that play though ball. was unbelievable. Yes. Had you practiced that play? Yeah, it never previously, worked. Never it worked. Never, worked. never I, worked. That home run play never worked. Fletch would throw that ball so high up into the stands. Sometimes it would so, knock some pitchers down. So the, the fact that it never worked before in that moment to execute it, where did the confidence come again, from in the play? Again, I think it was just the situation. Yeah of where we were, what we all just been through, and what was getting ready to happen for us. It was destined, okay? If you watch that play, there's not a hitch in it. 
There's not a hitch in Fletch. There's not a hitch in Ken. And there's not a hitch in me. And again, we've practiced this thing hundreds of times. Like I said, Fletch would throw the ball top of the stands. Ken would catch the ball, throw it 50 yards behind me or, 50, or 10 steps behind me. Or I'll be running too slow, throw it far ahead. Never completed the play. Hugs calls the play. Nobody blinked. Nobody looked at each other. No one said, oh, shit. We went right out there on the floor. We lined up, and it happened. It was like turning on a faucet of water mm -hmm. and just watching it flow from Fletch taking his two steps to the side to sling, from Ken boxing out to me running Trajan Lane and up the sideline two steps and giving them that cut across the middle or cut down the field. So I'm looking for that pass from my quarterback because I did play football. Play football at St. Joe's. Wide receiver, first letter from Lou Holtz. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. That was a cool play. Well, and then when your whole team blacks out in the game and you guys are all just going and you're playing in the zone, that sounds like where you guys were at. You had all five guys. You guys weren't thinking. You were just you, – you were in that moment. You wanted to win that game so badly. It didn't matter what you had to do in that last play. You guys were going to come up with it. We're going to get it done. All right, Melvin. Last picture is the last one here. Um, great picture. And you got the cheerleader holding up a sign that says, Cincy loves the helicopter. I'm not sure, Melvin, which <laughs> night this is for you, but I, I think it's just a, a special moment. Don't matter. It doesn't matter how many years go by that you see faithful are still going to love them. So, Melvin, love it. You know, and that's, that's, that's the thing about being here, man, in the city. You know, the people here in Cincinnati, the great folks here in Cincinnati have always, always made Melvin Levitt feel the greatest. You know, it doesn't matter if, you know, I'm in a restaurant somewhere or I'm at a, at a event as far as coaching another team against someone, man. It, people are just amazing. And the legacy here, as we talked about earlier, possibly could have went to another school. Yeah, that probably could have happened, but would it be a legacy like this? you know, in this city and where people, again, respect you so much because of what you were able to do, but then for the person that you are, you know, and who you're trying to be. And that's that's so rewarding. This night here, February 27th, uh, Melvin Levitt night, 2017, um, commemorating the Eastern Kentucky 10 three-point performance game. Uh, that was wonderful to be brought back you know, in front of everyone, have them stand up and cheer and jeer. And it felt like I was on the court all over again, man. But to stand there and have that moment of appreciation and you look around and you still see some of those same faces that you saw as boosters sitting along the, the front row and looking at the new student section, man, and how vibrant and red and black it is, you know, it takes me back to when we played when it was that sea of red and black constantly up in there, just creating this amazing ruckus for us to go out there and do our thing, man. So that night again was truly special. I thank the University of Cincinnati for all it's done for Melvin Levitt. Um, and definitely for this night here, because again, that was one that I truly will never forget. And that was really paying homage to, to me. So, Absolutely. Good I, stuff. I mean, that's memory lane with Melvin. That was, that was pretty cool. I mean, you, you had some absolute gems. Yeah, man. I mean, it, I mean those pictures brought up – when I saw him, I was like, I know Melvin's going to look at these and he's going to have a million things to say about them. Dude. And that was that was even better than – It's it's throwback Thursday. No, I, I, it's, it's throwback Thursday, man. So this, this, cool. this couldn't have been more fitting for me, man. I, I've been experiencing a lot of emotions, you know, obviously leading up into this tournament yeah. with, with, with getting back involved and being on the court, so – so can you update everybody on TBT, the basketball tournament, yes. where you guys are at uh, with everything? And if there's anything else that fans can do in regard to support, you know, making sure that they're there uh, to root you guys on. Well, first and foremost, people, you still can vote. All right, go out there, get your vote in, and um, help our tally, you know, for the rest of the tournament. Uh, also, you can get your money right, all right, because there's a money stake involved. So you get that, get your link set up and pass it around and, and get your money. Um, we're set. Okay. Roster is set. Uh, last signee was Yancey Gates last Friday. Um, we're, we're pretty much ready to go, man. Um, so what is the full roster? Do you have the full roster all full laid out? Full roster is all laid out, all right? That one guard, well, we got five guards in total, okay. all right, including myself. 
All right, we're, we're, we're going. Because again, man, I'm not gonna let all these. I'm not letting these guys have all the fun, man. Come on, man, you gotta let me have. <laughs> well, being a guard is, fun, is, is pretty fun. Like, I gotta let me have some fun. So, Deontay Vaughn being one, Tim Crowell, Marvin Gentry, Greg Williams. Okay. Greg Williams is from uh, the Kentucky Enforcers ABA League, okay. professional. So it's, it's going to be good to bring his prowess, you know, his professional skill, you know, to the game, along with the other guys who've been playing overseas. Okay. Um, front court, John Williamson, Rashad Bishop, as I said, Yancey Gates is going to be joining us, which I think, you know, that that sign, you know, there with him being a Cincinnati guy and this being a Cincinnati team, I thought it was very important. You know, we went after a couple of Cincinnati, you know, guys that were mainstays here. Couldn't get them due to other obligations. But having Yancey uh, come through in this situation was, was gigantic because, again, we're going to be able to throw him in the middle and sew up a whole well, lot of space. Well, but this is, a, this is a large undertaking. And I've seen the TBT. I've seen the games on ESPN over the last few years. But for you to be the GM and start the team – that's a large undertaking. How long did it take for you to get all of the players solidified for the roster, get all the votes? You've been all over social media. Did it become more than what you expected it to be at the beginning? Of course. And let me just uh, finish real quick because I don't want to slight these guys. Um, Cashmere Wright, obviously, one of our you know, great guards here at the University of Cincinnati. Coriante DeBerry, you know, big boy. Long, long. You see the size of his hands? Our fans have. You should. I mean, I'm telling you what, this dude's hands, man, is probably bigger than this stadium. All right. But again, that's so that's on our front line as well. And Rashad Bishop, you know, is going to play the wing spot for us. So we're going to be solid, man. Um, but like getting back to the process, it was it was long and fun. You know, we talked before we started like about which all you had to do. And like you said, be careful what you wish for out there sometimes, because now you got to step up to the plate and you got to got to do what you got to do. And that taught me a lot more about myself and seeing that, you know, I can really, really apply myself to something a whole lot bigger, you know, because it was a lot of administration work. All right. I'm not, uh, I'm not the social media guy. Everybody thinks, even though they look at my social media feeds, they'll think, Oh man, this dude been doing this. No, I, I, I just joined Facebook this year with Bearcat jam. Um, so doing all this stuff and, and gathering votes and, Finding the guys, I mean, this pool of players, it was so big. And, again, as it started to dwindle with guys telling me that, you know, they had other plans. And, you know, shout out to Troy Calpain, signed the two-way two with yep. uh, Orlando. You know, he was one of the guys that we went after. And I totally respect Troy wanting to take that NBA process and try to see what happens and look at what happened. Yeah, You know what I mean? So I'm very happy for him. Kevin Johnson was another one, you know, um, that wanted to be a part of us. But I think he's experienced success you know, as far as getting ready to go overseas. overseas. So with, with, with that whole thing, man, it was just, again, really being diligent. Um, and social media was powerful, obviously. Some people I was looking for was able to tap me into those guys, you know, just by through sharing a message with someone saying, hey, have you contacted or have you seen such and such? Um, the interviews, wow. Doing the interviews were just, that was so much fun, but setting them up and going to do them and knocking them out, you know, that was work. The voting process, like I said, my days and nights, man, extended with working school all day, finishing my tennis season with my boys, and then getting home at about 6.30 after a match and starting to bang out social media stuff to probably 2, 3 in the morning. Still to this juncture, man, I am running still late days and late nights, but this, this is a process that I took on. It is so much fun to be a part of it. And again, I'm teaching myself so many different things about me and what I'm able to do. So the administrative skills are getting better. Organization skills are getting better. The communication skills are getting a lot better. So uh, this is really, this opportunity has really done so many other things, you know what I mean, for me. But the process was, was hard. It was fun, though. And I appreciate everybody out there in Cincinnati and beyond because we got some fans in Cleveland. Um, as well, I got a couple people down in, in, the, in the California area that's wearing Bearcat Jam bands. It, this is cool, man, to, to, to get this out, to see it from its little stages, from when we were just talking about it to now it has grown to what it's supposed to be. And hopefully, potentially going forward, we'll make this a whole lot better. But we're set to go, man, July 21st, right. 2 p.m., Columbus, Ohio. Get to that Capitol Center, you know, get your four packs. 
Bearcat fans, Bearcat Jam fans, hey, there's a 25% discount on tickets that's out there. All you got to do is use the code CINCY25, okay? Let's try to pack the Capitol Center, all right? This is going to be a great event, a wonderful reunion of University of Cincinnati men's basketball, all right? It's going to be a fun, fun, fun time, and it's going to be very memorable. So please, 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 if you can, get your four packs, get your military discounts. If you're a service uh, individual, kids, all right, you get half off your seats or a portion off of yours as well. It, this is just going to be like, again, as I said, man, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity just, again, to – represent the sea all over again man in, awesome. a, in, a, in a different way so well i can tell you're excited about it too and you got uh, you got your group together now yeah. you can focus a little bit more on on playing getting oh, yeah. all the guys together and first of all congratulations on thank setting so it much, all man. up but thank you so much enjoy the experience which I, i'm sure you will i mean the opportunity to get with the group of guys that you mentioned i mean that's going to be fantastic right. and, and something i know the fans from cincinnati will be excited to see as well Definitely. so Congrats to you on putting that all together. Before we go, man, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm all about good things, man, and all about doing good stuff, you know, and today was about bridging the gap, so to speak, yeah. amongst uh, Xavier Athletics, you know, and I, I worked with Darnell Williams at Withrow yeah. High School uh, as a coach. I, I'm out there now with Gary Lumpkin at Wynn Woods. So in keeping with that, obviously we did this today, but you do know we, we got us a musketeer on our team, right? Uh, so yeah, I think someone had mentioned uh, to me that there was a, a musketeer, but I, yeah. I I didn't know that it was confirmed. Yeah, Jeff Robinson is Bearcat jamming, man. That's right. that's gonna he. So J Rob is gonna be in, in black and red. J Rob Bearcat jam on the front of his jersey. Bearcat, and you know what? I mean, I know a lot of people out there as they just probably just hearing this like like now really seriously <laughs> and confirmedly. They're like, what? Hey. This is what this is about, man. All right. This is what this is about. This is what Melvin Levitt has been about. Melvin Levitt has been about good things, been about bringing people together. And this situation, you know, came together uniquely, obviously, going over to the ABA game and watching Eric Hicks play. But then seeing these guys there. And I watched Jeff's uh, highlight film. It was all dunks. Yeah, he, he likes to jump. I, I couldn't believe it, dude. Yeah. I, I, I was. Then I started thinking, like, did he get any other stats? You know what I mean? But every play was a dunk. And it was like, you know what? To have a six foot 10 six foot 11 athlete like this, man, that can change the game in so many different ways, you know, this is only going to add to the firepower of what was going on. All right? Eric Hicks was, uh, was, was very diligent in, in making this happen. You know, he's my first assistant coach. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about them real quick. Got assistant coach Eric Hicks. Assistant coach uh, Andre Tate, who played here at the University of Cincinnati as well. And then we got assistant coach Curtis Bostic, who's another former Bearcat. And then we got the the the, the face of Fox 19 right now, uh, uh, Trisha Mackey. You know, she's going to bring that last coaching prowess that go. we need. And obviously she's a Cincinnati face, yeah. Cincinnati mainstay, man. So that's a great, great look for us as far as what we're trying to present. Um, but, yeah, man, Jeff Robb, man, he's he's rocking and rolling. All right, I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait to really get out there, man, and get this thing going. But shout out to um, Central Parkway, you know, banners on the Parkway, all that good stuff. All of them. All, all you guys over there, man. Um, this is Melvin Levitt. All right, I'm, I'm a good individual. I've always <laughs> been a good individual. All right, I don't want you guys out there tracking me, <laughs> tracking me down. All right. This is great. This is great for both of our universities. Okay, people. Go Bearcat men basketball. Xavier Musketeers men's hoops. All right. I'm gonna get it y'all on Twitter tonight. I'll I mean, be this sitting. is this is a complete. This is a bridging <laughs> the gap. You, you got a Xavier Musketeer on your team. You got a former. Z I mean, this is this is a full you, you, circle bridging the gap. Hey, right you now. couldn't want anything more better than what's going on right now, man. And I think we need more of this amongst. Our university, we need more relations like this. And I'm pretty sure there's some some people, some faculty members that work in here that, you know, they co-mingle together across town and stuff like that. But when it comes to athletics, man, it comes to former athletes from both entities, like I said, stuff like this is needed. This is a call to all you guys that's out there. All right, Bearcats and Musketeers. Let's put all that other stuff aside. All right, a lot of you guys are, you know, even anyway, I know for me, I went two or two against you guys, all right? So I'm good, all right? But some of these guys that went on four, one and three, 
They might be on the fence still about joining this thing. They might be. All right, but no, but nevertheless, man, that was just a little joke. But nevertheless, man, again, like as I said, we're, we're two great universities in this city. We had two great basketball seasons this year, and it's only going to continue to get better. The city of Cincinnati is booming, obviously. We're down here in the home of FC Cincinnati. I mean, so much going on here, man. Again, Xavier basketball has been a part Xavier, of that. Xavier. Oh, Xavier. Xavier. Did Xavier. I say ex-Xavier? I'm I, sorry I, about that. I, it might have just been a slip. There was a, uh, there was a truck going by oh, yeah. at that time, hey, so I think bad. it was just hey, a but let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you a real quick story, and I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Oh, no, you got to do one more thing for us. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the, we, we have that We well, have that still planned. Well, we still have that plan, but you have to do – it's called 10 questions. You're going to okay. have to do that. It cool. takes about – go ahead. Most unique thing about my um, recruiting process to the University of Cincinnati? Yeah. Guess where I stayed. Uh, I'm going to guess you stayed it's somewhere not, close to Xavier's it's campus. Not, it's not there anymore. It's probably something new because everything changes and gets tore down. But there's a dorm that used to be right there off of Central Parkway. You can see it as you roll by. It's an apartment complex. Not a dorm, I'm sorry. It's an apartment complex. I stayed with Pete Sears. Every time I came here That's funny. <laughs> for the University of Cincinnati visit, I was on the Xavier campus. <laughs> With Pete Sears, and the Pete Sears went to St. Joe, my former high school, Villa yeah, yeah. St. Joe, and stuff I mean, like once, that. Once again, we're going full so, circle. Yeah, but we know, we, it's just, right, we, know, we it's taking all, this thing full. Like yeah. I said, Miles Golden, man. I mean, was another guy, man. I mean, it's like I said, this this thing here, man. We we got history. Yeah, there is history. Right? There. I, we got history, man. I got a letter from you guys too. All right, yeah. I got that in my box at home with a lot of other ones. So. That was that that was a that was a pretty cool time, man. Pretty cool time. Awesome. All right. All ten right. questions. Let's do it. So, the ten questions. Well, this is on the be different playground. Okay. You know, we do this with these are all customized questions. They're always customized. Okay. They're either yes or no, true and false. You only have two options. Okay. You have to pick one of the two, and okay. you can't extrapolate your point. One of the two, boom, you're Got done. It. That's it. All right. First thing that comes to mind. All right, you ready? Let's do it. This is 10 questions <laughs> with Melvin Levitt. Question one, Montgomery Inn or Eli's Barbecue? Oh, Lord have mercy. I love barbecue, man, so I can't make that decision. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Would you rather be stranded on an island or on an island alone with someone you hate? I have to be stranded on the island with somebody I hate. Let's 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 let's, let's ante it up, man. Let's go. ante it up. I would. You would rather be a well-known musician or a world-renowned uh, movie director. Musician, man. I yeah. love music, man. I am a music connoisseur. All right. True or false? This, uh, this one I know is going to be tough for you. Okay. We, I, we talked about Xavier a little bit. We know you don't love Xavier, but you secretly do love the Blue Blob. I. Look here, man. That dude. True or false? That's, hey, that's true. True. I, hey, there we I, go. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna slight that at all, man. All right, yeah, all right. I, I love the blob. I'm, I'm just gonna say it right now. Sorry, but hey, I, I like the blob. <laughs> you have to. Got to. True or false? Kenyon Martin was the most ferocious teammate you ever had. You true. True. Okay. I, mean, you I had our long man yeah, and Danny yeah, yeah. Fortune. But, all right. He had some tough guys. But Kenyon Martin was the only guy I saw hit somebody. Okay. All right. Danny would tell you he'll hit you. Art would swing at you. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ken was the first person I saw that will hit you. All right. <laughs> Question seven. You ready for it? These are, they're getting tough. They're getting tough. You see, I started you a little bit right, easy. Yeah. I got kind think of. Some although now. the barbecue at first was a struggle too. True or false? True or false? One of the most frightening moments in your life was being yelled at by Bob Huggins for the first time. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So that's true. Oh yeah. <laughs> True or false, you secretly do not like the nickname helicopter because you feel it's still limiting to your <laughs> jumping ability and you have never actually been in a helicopter. <laughs> I can repeat that question if you need me to. Do you want me to repeat it? I never have been in a helicopter, <laughs> truthfully. <laughs> so, do you feel it's, it's limiting to your nickname? I think so because so, again, I'm not rode in the so helicopter. True. You I'm secretly so, hate it. I'm so sorry. I, I, next time I'm in Gatlinburg, I'm going to have to take a trip, a tour in one of those orange or yellow helicopters that's sitting on the, on the sidewalk. You ever been to Gatlinburg and seen that? I've been to Gatlinburg one time. There's a, there's a lot I almost of, got eaten by a bear. Did you? I was, yeah, we, I was in the hot tub and a, and a bear came up. No I had, way. I, I had to sprint inside. 
Oh, so you must have been up in the woods in like one of those chalets. Yeah, we were or in the, we were in the woods. Oh, yeah, it goodness. was back when a sophomore in college, off season, experimenting. Wow. Uh, question nine: True or false? Okay. You only committed to Cincinnati to be closer to Skyline Chili. True. <laughs> so true. That I would tell you what, man. That, that, they, Skyline Greg, got some great stuff, man. Greg, Greg, you're asking the last question. You're asking the last question. Greg, go ahead. Question 10. The maestro G's up. Who is the best UC dunker of all time? Is is it the helicopter or James the Flight White? <sighs> you have really, really took me. This is a good, I mean. Nah, I know you that said. Was, that was the you, best question we've had in this whole, this whole interview. I know you said. Quick answer. You can't think about it. But this has to be. Oh, my gosh. I have to slide this down okay, the middle. Right, Why? Right. Okay. Because James White has no vertical leap at all. Have you ever seen that guy jump off two feet? Can't do it. Now, one foot, he'll jump to the moon. Vice versa. My vertical <laughs> jump is to the moon. My one leg stinks. All right? So when you talk about. Who actually is the – I can't really say because, again, we were two different jumpers. James White never dunked on anybody, all right? And I will say that confidently, although I love James. I gave James his nickname, Flight White, Flight 75. I did that, all right? But I never seen him dunk on anybody. It's all been, you know, fast break and all that. Melvin's going to dunk on you. I think you're answering the question. That's the difference, all right? I think, you're, I think you just answered the question. That's the difference, all right? Mel's going to dunk <laughs> on you. He's going to dunk around you. He's going to dunk past you and all the rest of that. But shout out to my man, Jay White. We're on, we're on Twitter together. And I'm, I'm going to say this right now, man, and I don't, I, I'm not trying to dig at no one, all right? I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that. But there was a lot of guys that I got at on Twitter about Bearcat Jam yeah. that I still have not heard from yet, all right? James Flight White. With the we tweets, okay, and the likes on what we're doing. Obviously, as a former Bearcat, and he, you know, he only spent what one year here, two years here. He was a Florida guy. Now, for some of my guys that was four year Bearcat guys, I'm a little upset right now. All right, because we had someone that came in here and appreciated being a Bearcat, and now still does with seeing what we're doing. But there's been some guys that came through here and doing their thing, and they're dancing around us right now, Brad. And I don't appreciate that. And don't, it's not a, it's not a shot at anybody. I'm not I'm not trying to stir the pot, but you guys see us, all right? Some of y'all that are out there on Twitter, play with these guys. Give these guys a shout out. Give these guys a a a, a shot of support. All right? Because again, they're trying to do what you're doing. If you're out there doing it at that major level, NBA or overseas. Okay, these guys trying to get that same look and they're, that, that same livelihood, and they're representing this Bearcat the way they should be. Shout us out, man! You ain't got to shout me out personally, if, you know what I mean? If that's the case, because I know I haven't played with a lot of those guys, and they don't know Melvin Levitt, so that's cool. But the guys that you do know on this basketball team, you should actually get behind and you should support. But again, that's not to try to throw salt or be you know. Blah, blah, blah. I don't try to be anything about nothing. I'm just kind of right now speaking the truth, you know what I mean? Because again, we're bridging the gap. All right, right now there's a gap with some people in our university, you know what I mean, as far as what we're doing and what they're seeing. We need to bring them more into what's going on. So right now on Be Different, I'm telling you guys out there, all you Bearcats, all right, that have not jumped on this Bearcat Jam, this is for real, all right? This is not for fake. I'm not doing all this, and this is not something that is not going to happen and is not coming true. We're on ESPN 2 o'clock next Saturday, July 21st, Capitol Center. All right, Columbus, Ohio. And we're playing against the Texas Matadors, Texas Tech. All right. So again, this is this is something that you need to really again. If you write, you you love the university, you're a Bearcat. Saturday afternoon, two p.m. Turn your TV on. All right. You're at around town somewhere at a sports bar. You're eating uh, early lunch, brunch, or something. Tell them to cut that tube on ESPN because we're live. We're gonna have a lot of people up there. We're bringing some uh, some youngsters with us. To try to fill the stands. We're, we're employing a lot of Bearcat people to be there. I implored a lot of cheerleaders today, a lot of old dance team members. I'm sorry, I didn't want to say old because I don't want y'all to, you know, I ain't no old lady. I know you ladies are not old, all right? 
Just I maybe mean, not in me, their maybe not in their prime. Re- let me rephrase maybe that. Out of their prime is that fair? former, former dance team and former, you know, cheerleaders yeah, to, to get good. there. All right, let's get there. Let's yeah. support because again, even though these are not the guys that you cheer for while you were here, this is a reunion of it all. We're all a part of it. There's a person from just about every generation of UC basketball except for going through the 80s. Okay? Other than that, we got somebody from every genre that you can put your face on and go, I remember that time. I remember that time. Oh, that time right there was just so great. So we put all that together for this Bearcat Jam TBT team. So we hope to see you guys there. All right. I mean, I... Melvin, we, we got it across everything I think we need to get across. We, we got some memories with Melvin, which was, which was fantastic. We got updated on what you're doing now. We talked about TBT. I mean, we're done. We're, we're bridging the gap. Be different podcast. Brad Redford, Greg Wichard, Nick Given, Tom Wilkinson. I mean, we're, we're out of here. Be we different just, podcast. We'll, we'll be back next week. See ya. We just did it.